Hey, how's it going guys? We're going to be playing a little bit of Strategic Command World War II, World at War. Um, I really wanted to take a look at this game and now I have the time to really, you know, give it my full attention, uh, at least for the next few hours, uh, before I go teach some students. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and spend the time with you. And I think probably the best way to go about this is to go with a user decision. Um, depending on how many people show up right now, because I just started the stream with really no, um, no update whatsoever that I was going to be doing it. Um, so let's just see how many people show up, and then we'll decide what faction we're going to play as, um, and how we're going to kind of play. I'm also kind of take a look at the options here, um, because I want to see if I can actually get rid of a few things, like I uh, use her moves, so I don't have to watch them. Uh, we'll we'll check once we actually get the game started. Let me just drop this in uh, Discord, guys, quickly. Okay, guys, um, so just let me know if you see the stream, etc. Uh, I think you should, um, but once again, I want to play with the Axis. What I was trying to see if I could do is to not see my allied moves, and that way I could focus exclusively on playing as Imperial Japan here. Um, so we're starting right at the beginning, World at War. This is the toughest campaign, without a doubt, um, so let's go for it. I will play the campaign. And uh, let me just see. Spotting, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be possible to completely ignore one of these. So, you know what? We're going to go ahead and play as the Axis. Wish us the best of luck, guys. Let's see how we do. Um, and I will be using NATO counter since that definitely seems to be um, the favorite among the people. But I'll also put national colors. Uh, this will allow us to differentiate between, you know, who owns what. So... Let's go for it. Obviously, I think Invasion of Poland is probably going to be our first focus, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Maybe we have to do a Czechoslovakia, but I believe that happened in 38, so uh, maybe not. Right, boys, World War II has begun. So the invasion of Poland begins in earnest. And winning the war in China, we have invested a great deal of effort into our war with China, but a decisive victory still eludes us. Nanking is the last major Chinese port receiving foreign trade, including supplies from the United States. Should we gain control of Nanking, China may no longer be able to continue to resist us, and victory could be within our grasp. As many of you know, this is kind of referring to the rape of Nanking. Um, it says here, avoiding war with the UK and the USA. And we, we really want to read this stuff so that we have the easiest outcome in World War II as possible. Uh, the Foreign Ministry reports that both the UK and the USA are prepared to defend all areas under influence under, under uh, or throughout Asia and the Pacific. The Foreign Ministry reports that the UK and the USA are prepared to defend all areas under their influence, blah, blah, blah. Beware also that sending any naval units near Hawaii, Alaska, or North America will increase U.S. mobilization. 
uh, and avoiding war with the Soviets is we just have to actually keep uh, five different units there. I actually remember this part. We have to keep uh, five different uh, units garrisoning uh, northern Manchuria. Uh, so, may attack Manchuria if military presence uh, is lowered. So, guys, we're going to start actually on the eastern front here. Uh, with the Japanese, I really want this to succeed. So first things first, we probably want to start doing some research. We also want to start uh, recruiting some more units as possible and uh, see what happens here. Okay. Let's see what we can do. I feel really tempted to go over here and north to Payotov. Um, but let's see. It's probably Payotov, uh, since this is China, of course. And what can we do to, you know, even the odds? We don't have any bomber support. Oh, we have a little bit of bomber support over here. Uh, let's see if we can do some damage here. And I don't think it can. The odds are against us. But here it could do significant damage. Now, the Chinese do have some interceptors, but let's hope it's not enough to really put up a much of a fight. How's it going, Napoleon? Good to see you, bud. All right, nice. We actually took a chunk out of the enemy infantry there. And maybe we want to look for these weak, weak points. So I'm going to keep hitting this area with uh, our bombers. They should have no fear whatsoever. They're fighting under the banner of the glorious emperor. They should have no issue um, in dying here if need be. Once again, not looking great for us, but I still might go for some of these attacks. What I will, of course, do is attack the weaker unit here. Uh, this is going to be the 414th Chinese Army uh, under Chiang Kai-shek, the Republic of China. And, of course, up here we have the communists to deal with eventually. And currently they are fighting with the Republic of China, alongside them, I should say, uh, only temporarily to defeat us. So we've got to be extra careful here. Yeah, we're definitely not going to go for that attack. What about over here? Oh, yeah, baby. So look at that. A lot of Japanese superiority here, um, just right off the bat. But that doesn't mean we can stop sending units over here to Manchuria. We've got to have a constant stream of units. Uh, I think also bringing over our battleships could probably help, especially since taking Nanking is going to be one of our more, one of our more important priorities. Let me just do this so I can keep this below us. We don't have a file E, damn it. Um, let's reinforce. And of course, we still have to focus on so many different fronts, specifically Poland, with our Germans to be able to take Poland in a timely fashion. And you guys might help to uh, decide with me whether or not we want to stick to the molotov ribbentrop Pact or just try and take as much Poland as possible and go ahead and immediately um, tell the Soviets that we're not giving that land back, which could lead to war. It could also just lead to really bad relations. We've got to be careful here as we approach Singapore. This is under, um, of course, uh, British control. Really checking every possible outcome. I, I want to try to make a, this a perfect campaign as best as possible, as close as I can to making it a perfect campaign as well. And as you can see, we can't really move any of these infantry units because we have to keep this area um, fairly strong. But I think we can leave Seoul here in uh, South Korea. All right, for our special forces, we're going to do an amphibious transport here, guys, straight from Osaka. And we will, of course, bring them to uh, Manchuria as well. It's also a transport ship here. I think we can drop this guy off pretty soon, as long as he's near a port. Nice, another infantry brigade. Don't mind if I do, although we also have some issues over here uh, near Hong Kong. We need to try and establish war, or we need to take it. But currently, with the, with the Japanese, we're actually trying to avoid war with the Allied powers. Um, only China is going to be our enemy. This is sort of the Sino-Japanese war. Uh, we only join later, um, specifically. Well, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'll go for this charge. A bit risky. Thanks for the feedback, Napoleon. Oh, 
Oh, I see what you mean. In other words, get garrisons to replace these units over here so that we can move them to support this area. That's a good idea. I like that. Uh, let's also go ahead and give the amphibious transport to our Tokyo Second Corps. I'm sure they can't wait to give their lives for the Emperor. Who can blame them? Let's keep moving. We also have to be careful, guys, with our um, southeastern um, holdings. We have a lot of different holdings here, and actually we could declare war on places like the Philippines and just go ahead and establish military dominance. We're going to need more troops for that, but I think I'm going to put a lot of research into new units. Looks like we have to wait just a little bit. Oh, wait a minute. We can purchase. What am I talking about? All right, so let's go to Japan. I want to get some light tanks. Second army. Oh, no. We're going to have to wait a bit to produce, guys. A few more victories are going to be necessary. And again, guys, uh, if any of you are watching, feel free to chime in because um, I'm more than willing to rename some of the units here. You have to specify when, whether you want Italian units, uh, German units, etc. Uh, but we can go from there. So we've taken... Well, we're about to take Poland, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I don't think we'll have too much of an issue, but you never know. Going straight forward to Warsaw. And actually, I'll just break through with the tanks here. Oh, little Soviet, or excuse me, a Polish ambush, but I don't think we'll have too much difficulty with that. Beautiful. This was a lightning quick attack in Poland. Um, uh, as, you know, which was different from the invasion of Norway. The Germans actually had, I think, two, three months uh, where they had to stand up to the Norwegians and put up a very good fight. The Polish were just not prepared. Uh, there were some instances where they put up incredible fights, but, you know, unfortunately, they couldn't keep that up for very long. Oh yeah, that's sehr gut. Should have also brought over some of these destroyers to see if we could have, could have potentially gotten some shots. But what I'll do instead is try and get behind the enemy. And we'll have to force these guys back just to finish them off. So that's the Pomorka cavalry down. Okay, let's keep that bombing run going, guys. Beautiful. Polish Air Force is suffering pretty heavily already. We can actually cut these guys off even more. So this Polish unit is going to be trapped, and this is one of the best things you can do in Strategic Command. Try and trap enemy units so that they can't escape, uh, or at least you seriously mess with their logistics and uh, you know all of the support they're going to be getting from these rail yards. It's time to be brave, mena. Attack! Liebensraum must be ours. And I think we can actually destroy that unit, potentially get a second attack, but what I'll actually do is try and get south of Warsaw. Look at that. Ugh, if we could take Warsaw in turn one, that would just be incredible. Be so happy. I doubt that's going to occur, but you never know. It's one of the best starts I've had uh, in that particular advance. So, guys, what do you think so far? And we really do need most of the chat responding on this one. Uh, do you want us to keep to the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which means that we would split Poland evenly with the Soviets? Or do you want us to say, screw that, you know, we're not sticking to the pact. We are going to take all the land that we conquer, which will probably be more than the Soviets, as they only begin their attack once we take Warsaw, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, yeah, let me know. I, I really want your feedback on this uh, particular game, guys, because it's really, really easy to bring you guys in for support on this game. Uh, we have a lot of time, so a lot of different decisions to consider, and I'm more than willing to consider your, divi your, your divisions, your decisions. Pre perhaps we could even make you uh, sort of uh, Reichsmarschals or a few Reichsmarschals uh, to help us make the best decision in this area. There we go, another Polish village under our control. Actually, this is Lvov. This is a proper city. I want to get rid of those mechanized brigades, which the Polish army doesn't have much of. Napoleon says, can you name one German SS Panzer, Korda Totenkopf SS Panzer? Sure, we can. Uh, but I believe we do already have SS divisions, if I'm not mistaken. But we can do that. So for now, we're not going to mess with our French front. 
but it wouldn't be idea to reinforce these guys and even upgrade them in time uh, to make them stronger than the French. Although, that being said, uh, attacking France, I probably want to go through the north over here in Belgium and the Netherlands. Uh, so, we'll see what happens. We, we might not even have to really worry about these guys. All right, let's take that SS Panzer Corps um, that uh, Napoleon wanted. All right, so we're going to call this the um, Corps de Tortenkopf SS Panzer. Oh, we can't do the entire court there, Totenkopf, so we'll do this. We all know what it stands for there, so that's the court there, Totenkopf SS Panzer Division. We're so close to uh, getting Warsaw, but yeah, I did expect to take it, you know, almost on turn one there. I was confident for a bit. Now, another thing we want to do very early on into the game, guys, is start moving some of our U-boats uh, into the Allied trading areas um, and to essentially try and stop a lot of the merchant ships arriving from the U.S. They're not currently allied with the British, but that's going to change very, very soon. All right, so let's send our cruisers forward first just to see the situation. Hope this works out. How about that? We're also allowing people uh, to take over different departments during this fight play. So if you want to, you know, you know, lead the navy or infrastructure or anything like that, let me know, and and we'll see if we can't make that happen. I'll control the major battles, of course, but if you, you know, we can have, even have generals give some suggestions, and uh, if you guys do a good job, we'll actually promote you to general, where on perhaps some turns, I'll take your, uh, your suggestion no matter what. In other words, it'll override my own suggestion. We could also start working on diplomacy pretty soon, but it's not too important. Why don't we send the fighters in for an attempt at strafing run on these guys? I'm going for it. I don't recommend doing this. Yeah, that was not very effective. We've still got some uh, Slovakian troops here. It looks like the um, Polish army is getting way too close to our border. Let's attack. Time to look at the Eastern Front, see if, uh, if we make any made any changes here. Again, very risky. The odds are against us, but I'm still going for it. Unless I've got some bombers here. Nope. Oh, maybe not. So I think you guys can see what I'm trying to do here, and let's get behind the enemy. A pretty naive attempt, but you never know. Now we only have one unit at Yuhan province, uh, which will be a problem. And again, we could at any point go ahead and declare war on one of these uh, much smaller nations. 
Uh, but I think that's going to bring us unneeded heat right now. So we'll play it cool. At least right now. To Japan. Oh, we still can't purchase, unfortunately. All right, we actually have a lot of forces coming, as you can see here. A lot of special forces, etc. Even airborne forces for the Japanese. So that's looking pretty good. For the Italians, not many, um, but we don't really need the Italians yet. And uh, the Germans are doing great. Now, what can we do with the Italians? We could attack Albania, I believe. Um, even Greece if we wanted to, but then the Germans are going to have to bail us out. They're not going to like that. Uh, we can at least keep Ethiopia and potentially even attack these French and German cities of Berbera and Djibouti uh, if it comes to that. If it comes to that. In fact, I'm not even sure I should reinforce these guys uh, because, after all, they are Italian units, not the best units in the game. Um, but we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I really don't want anyone leaving that front. And for research, I really want to go into infantry weapons. Inf insufficient funds. And that probably we means we have insufficient funds to uh, start bringing other countries towards our side. Bulgaria is getting very close to joining us. Um, so I'm actually going to go ahead and do some... We have 35 available. We should be able to use these. Okay, I guess we have to wait just a little bit longer, boys and girls. And look at this. This is really tempting me to attack uh, the Netherlands and Belgium. There are no defenders here as far as I can see. But we need more forces for sure before we do that. Go for it. Beautiful. The 10th Army shines again. One more attack on that unit, and they're wiped out. Let's keep reinforcing these frontline units. I don't know if you guys think that this is a mistake, but I think it works for now. for our troops from Japan. Well, the AVs are unable to move. That's a little weird. I don't know what that's about. We'll have to figure out what that is about. I hope this doesn't lower Soviet respect for us. Again, we're at war. Well, we're not really at war. We're, we're at a very uneasy state of peace. But as soon as we appear weak, they, they will declare war. Without a shadow of a doubt. Nice attack from Wuhan province. Can we get another one? Yeah, like that. Just weakening the army little by little. The more mistakes they make, the better off for us. And obviously the same goes for them. You know, and our mistakes... Uh, cause a lot more problems if they don't go properly uh, or if they don't go properly if they're not resolved okay yeah, we gotta get out of here all right guys we're gonna end the turn wish us luck okay lieutenant general Kurt student 7th Flieger division is 
partially formed and trained unit of paratroopers. Despite its incompleteness, it could be used on the latter stages of the invasion of Poland or in an early attack on France. Alternatively, we could uh, complete its air training and formation, in which case it will deploy at full strength at Hamburg at the end of the year. Um, I am going to go ahead and say... Say yes or we'll see if yeah, let's say yes. We're gonna say yes. We we need as many MPP as we can get. And German paratroopers deploy at Breslau. So even though they're not as well trained, I don't think it's gonna take too long to train them properly. Uh Gian Galeazzo Chiano. This is a guy that uh, Mussolini actually eventually had assassinated and was his uh, son-in-law, which is creepy. Our second corps is nearly mobilized and ready for deployment. If you wish, it could be sent to reinforce our armies in Abyssinia for the cost of 30 MPPs. Given the difficulty of reinforcing our population, our position in East Africa um, in the event of war with the UK, this might be a good option. Um, alternatively, the course can be deployed at Naples for service in Europe or North Africa. I think I'm going to actually deploy them at Naples. So, um, yes, I want to deploy at Naples. I don't think we're going to hold Abyssinia. I guess don't. Okay, Canada has declared war. New Zealand has declared war. I'm amazed they're the first to declare war before even the British or uh, French. South Africa declares war. And the there we go. So the British actually declared war after South Africa. That's a bit shameful on the part of the British, I have to admit. And, of course, France declares war. Does this mean we have to start our invasion of France? Not quite. Um, we just need to get prepared for it. But we've got to beat Poland here. The Kriegsmarine is confident that a protracted naval comfort, uh, conflict effort against the British Empire will bring about their eventual withdrawal from the war. We can target n not only the convoy sail sailing directly to the UK, but also enemy ports and other coastal areas of importance to the Canadian economy. Beautiful. So not just putting U-boats here, but also destroying uh, any of the stuff we can see around here. Ports, etc. It's an interesting situation, guys, but now we are truly at war. And it's only up to, well, you know who, to get us a victory here. We'll have to wait and see. A lot of the uh, Polish armies are about to be encircled. Ah, thank you, Napoleon. Yeah, I think the main attack is gonna have to be through the Netherlands. We can bring back a, a few units. Not all of them, but a few units from the Eastern Front to the Western Front. And uh, I'm hoping it's going to work in our favor. Put it that way. Yep, for sure, the British had a blockade. They had to declare war on us as soon as we reached this area. I guess I can't blame them, but I hope our Kriegsmarine puts up an amazing fight. Be resilient, Mena. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, um, Napoleon, about not putting the unit in Ethiopia. Also, just because it's such an area, it's such a difficult area to hold with just Italian units. If we were willing to di divert some German units over there, we might be with, uh, able to hold it, but I'm not sure it would have made that big of a deal anyway. But yeah, having the Suez Canal is good. That's one thing to consider. Oh, 
come on. I just want to get a few subs out. We want to be the absolute third Reich here, guys. We want to do a lot better than the actual third Reich did. Is that possible? I don't know. I really hope it, w it is, but we'll have to see. And you can see the Chinese are cutting us off here. They do a really good job at this, and a lot of this happens uh, because of Chinese partisans uh, that get behind our lines. Both um, uh, partisans from the Republic of China and partisans from Mao's forces. In fact, the partisans from Mao's forces are probably the ones causing problems right now. Uh, they're a lot stealthier. They use guerrilla tactics for the most part, of course, than the uh, partisans from the Chinese uh, Army of the Chinese Republic, which is only kind of an army when you think about it. There we go. The Polish army suffers from attrition. This is what happens when you cut people off, guys. The Red Army begins crossing the border into Poland. Now, this is a problem because now, um, you know, depending on whether we want to keep the Molotov -Ribbent Ribbentrop Pact or we want to say, nope, we're keeping this territory, um, depends a lot also on how much the Soviets take. So it's kind of a race right now. And the British Viceroy of India declares war on Germany. This is a shameful thing, and we're going to have to use the Japanese to assist us here. The Allies send supplies to China via the Hanoi Kunming Railway. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Hey, Wavel, how you doing, bud? Axis Raiders disrupt Canada, US, UK convoys. Always something new to deal with, boys. So we did lose a few heavy cruisers. Now that Canada, Australia, and New Zealand have all entered the war, it is imperative we target not only the critical supply convoys, but also enemy ports and other coastal areas of interest. Placing a naval unit on the red hatching near a port will mine the port, triggering a small reduction in economic production in the vicinity. I didn't even know this. You learn something new every day. Um, and do I need a specific... Uh, oh, just any naval unit. Okay, cool. Uh, recommendation to send surface raiders to target the spy con convoys as well as all available units to uh, mine these countries' ports. I think it's the best thing to do. We want the least bit of supplies coming in for the Allies. High Command has commissioned General Falkenhorst to study a possible invasion and occupation of Denmark and Norway in April 1940. He will present the plan for Operation Vesaboom in March 1940 as well as the cost for the invasion and occupation. If you decide to carry through with an invasion prior to this state, be sure to move units quickly to occupy Copenhagen, Oslo, and Narvik before the Allies can react. And in this entire campaign, I'm even, even against the Soviets, I find that to be one of the most difficult ones, just because we have to use so many amphibious transports. Uh, the area is extremely mountainous in Northern Europe, and you've got to be like in the perfect situation to get a good attack. So it's a tough one, to say the least. Open conflict with Mao's communists may be avoided, at least for some time, if we do not advance close to their territory. Uh, so maybe we just don't want to push towards that area. Communist China has a 60% chance per turn of swinging 5 to 20% towards the Allies. If any Axis units are within 2 hexes of Xi'an, Lunchao, or Chongqing, or within 3 hexes of Yan'an, only advance through Xi'an, Lunchao, Chongqing, or Yerian if you're ready to fight the communists too. What do you guys think, guys? Do we fight the communists as well, or focus just on the Chinese Republic? All right, more units on the way, boys. The Imperial cause is always of extreme importance. No matter what your political affiliation, that's something in Japan um, that is just tantamount to victory. So let's get these AV units here. And I'm gonna probably send them over here near Fuzhou. There seems to be a lot of Chinese activity. Banzai! would be, of course, the city of Nancheng. I can't imagine they're going to get much better treatment than the folks in Nanking. 
which have got to be zeros, and just a wonderful job they do here. Focus China, don't fight with Mao, says um, Napoleon here. Might be a good idea, might be a good idea man. not looking good. I hate these Chinese uh, partisans, though. Ooh. At great risk, I could attack them. But you know what? Um, I want to get close to Mao's forces over here. These are Republic of China forces, but these are the areas that Mao considers his. So I'm actually going to move southwards and try to assist these boys against the partisans. I think also, garrison units will be pretty effective against partisan units. Potentially uh, bring them in as well. Here we go. Can anybody get in the town? Okay, we've actually liberated. Well, I'm not sure if liberated is a very good uh, choice of words for that kind of situation. You could probably imagine what happens to most of the villagers in there, and it's not good. Nice. We're getting some excellent attacks with our Chinese or their uh, Japanese troops. Excuse me. If we can keep this up and keep them reinforced, we should be doing very, very well. The 54th Army is just battered, to say the least. Over here, though, I want to be careful. We've also got Hanoi over here, uh, which belongs to France, and definitely uh, a potential attack target for us. Nice, the CB can actually open fire here. It's just partisans, but they didn't manage to see them. Damn guerrilla warfare. Okay. Let's head to Poland, guys. I think we can get a uh, final victory here. I really hope we can. We've got a tank. Although what would be best is this. Cut off any and all rail um, income to this area. So Warsaw is entirely shut down. And look at that. We're even going to be able to take this guy out. I don't think they're going to get any rail support whatsoever. And I hope our units gain veterancy through battles like this. I, I don't recall if they do. Well, it still wouldn't look so good for us. It's time for the Poznan 2BRs, boys. that unit with another unit. Oh my goodness, I thought Progenitor was for sure ours. Uh, let's send in these sort of untrained uh, paratroopers, but I think they'll actually manage to do a very good job against this unit, and we can reinforce them. Again, they are an elite troop uh, without, despite not receiving the best training. They're doing an okay job. That's what I like to see. And now Krakow is under our control. The enemy is not happy. I would recommend they just surrender. 250 natural morale boost. I'll also move up our fighters, uh, basically our air bases here. And I think by next turn, guys, the uh, Poles at least are going to be suffering from a severe mor morale loss. As well as a few dead units. Danzig is finally ours, and Germany is unified, at least in this respect. Huge bonus for our troops, of course. We shall attack, and the Polish are getting very weak. I think you guys can see that. 
they've got absolutely nowhere to run to. Actually found um, a Polish air base here. Might as well attack next turn, even with our Slovakian troops. Uh, and once again, just completely cutting off the Polish rail lines. Guys, we're going to be taking so much territory, so much more than the Soviets. And again, I ask you guys, what do you think? Do we just say, screw the Soviets, screw the molotov Ribb ribbentrop Pact, and try to hold this area? Or is it better to buy more time? I don't know. Um, because maybe, you know, despite not being able to buy more time, we're going to be a lot closer to Moscow, a lot closer. And maybe if we're just extra fast we could just avoid attacking Norway entirely and just focus on the Soviets. I don't know. I really don't. Warsaw is surrounded. Make sure to keep these generals fairly close. Not a bad idea to send our Italians out either, uh, because they can head to the Atlantic. And once again, the Italians are also capable of setting mines, all that fun stuff. Uh, we've even got some Italian infantry if need be. My sub's gonna have to attack that destroyer. It's a very give and take battle, unfortunately. But this good fellow is going to be able to hunt some enemy ships. Ooh, I thought so. Wow. Ambushed by a destroyer. It looks like we're going to have to buy some uh, some more naval ships, which is pretty tough for the Germans. That's one thing they were not. I wouldn't say they would excel that. Besides with the U-boats, uh, it's it's it ain't going to be easy. Put it that way. not looking good at all for these guys uh another sub up here he can't arrive for this particular battle oh my goodness let's go for it and actually good shot there against the heavy cruiser they're not exactly uh dealt to deal with submarines unless these submarines have been surfaced great we know that there are some uh enemy submarines around the area Let's go try to hunt them with the Italian destroyers. Question is, how well will they do? So far, they're not doing a single thing. All right, let's hit the battleship here. No, oh, maybe we're not. I think that's what it is. I don't think we're officially at war with France yet. I think that's the issue here. And let's see if we can do anything with diplomacy. Uh, I really want to try to bring these people over to our side as quickly as possible. So with Bulgaria. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's not bad. See, we have plenty of MPP to bring these guys over at our, to, to uh, our side. Who knows? They, they might even join us. Finland is also very much in support of joining us, which would help us take Norway and Sweden a lot easier. So, okay, we, we don't typically put this much in diplomacy, but I think it's a good idea. Let's focus on command and control here. Okay, insufficient funds, that's too bad. We're gonna have to wait a bit, boys. And girls, of course, and girls, shame on me.
you know, the four of you that actually watch these videos on, on a regular basis. And yeah, they've held out in Warsaw um, once again. So surprised by the Poles and their fighting spirit, but I don't think they're going to last very long against the Russian uh, or Soviet onslaught here. Let's take a look at these other areas. It's going to still take those EVs a while to get over here. I'm going to try to cut him off. It's going to be, without a doubt, um, a really tough fight here. We need as many Japanese units as possible, as many people willing to join the Imperial Japanese Army to keep back the Chinese threat. Even though we are at the invaders, let's be honest. And again, we can't leave any of those cities with these units. They have got to stay here, at least for now. Uh, let's purchase and see if we can get anything for Japan. Even some bombers would be a pretty good idea, but you guys know me. I prefer to get some tanks. Uh, infantry, etc. Oh. Beautiful, guys. We can purchase an infantry army, which, especially since most of our fights are in a jungle climate, I think that's just fine. And, uh, so, yeah, um, Napoleon mentioned a garrison. This is a good idea, too, so we can put a garrison in place of a pretty decent infantry unit there in northern Manchuria uh, to still dissuade uh, the enemy from attacking us. So I, I support this initiative. Can I invade the USA? I believe I can, yeah. I believe just about anything is possible. It's like a recreation of World War II. Uh, I believe you, the invading the USA is absolutely something you can, you can do. Or should be, anyway. Over here in Konigsberg, we still have some bombers. Why not? Let's go on this on a strafing run, see if we get lucky. Nope, we actually lost a plane. Lesson learned. No shenanigans. We're, we're going to try to play this truly, truly strategically. I just want to get a look at our units in Abyssinia. Even though I doubt we'll win here unless we dedicate a lot of forces, you know, there's no there's no reason we shouldn't make it harder for the uh, French and the English to take it back. Oh, another thing I really wanted to do is try and bring Francisco Franco onto our side. Easier said than done, I'm sure. All right, Sweden is starting to like us quite a bit. The Solomon Islands, that's pretty funny. Yugoslavia is turning very pro-Germany. Oh, yes. Let's increase that a bit if we can. Right now, it doesn't look like there's many chances of success, but that's all right. And let me reinforce all of our guys here. On the line with the French. There are actually some gaps starting to appear here. Uh, for those that don't know, a lot of the French actually went on vacation. They were actually on vacation during the German attack. It's risky, um, but these are fighters. I'm not going for it. And we're not declaring war on um, the Netherlands yet, but that's something to consider here in a second, boys. Yeah. 
Again, risky, but sometimes that pays off. We also have to consider guys taking places like Manila in the Philippines. Um, you know, even taking Brunei from the from the British, Kuching. Uh, but again, I really want your feedback on this. How would you approach World War II if you were playing as the Axis? Let me know in the comments down below, guys. Every single comment helps uh, and gives us some insight um, into kind of what you expect, um, how you expect this battle to go. All right, boys, ending the turn. Amelia to the squad. Did I say yes if you would like one of our ships to continue sailing through the Gibraltar straight to the Atlantic? Yes. The British Expeditionary Force arrives in France. So this is a, uh, you know... Uh, I think it's several hundred thousand, if I'm not mistaken, British units that landed in France. These are also the same guys um, that eventually um, were um, at the Battle of Dunkirk and had to retreat pretty damn quickly. Uh, so now it's just sort of a precautionary measure. But we could begin the attack at any point. Of course, we want to take Poland first so we can divert a bunch of infantry over there to the west. If you're new guys, don't be shy to throw down some bits. You can also hit my YouTube channel subscription down below on uh, the Civil War picture. Um, sub to me there and share the channel with friends. It all really helps. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Do what you can to knock out the British. That's why I think the invasion of France is going to happen, have to happen a little, you know, before the actual schedule. Uh, because I think talk, knocking them out is going to be very important. And if we can get a situation like Dunkirk, that would be beautiful. Now, this is scary. The Jap the Chinese, excuse me, have cut off one of our larger Japanese armies. And I think those guys are going to be massacred. At least our uh, subs have the good sense of uh, evading any attacks. Let's see how long that lasts, though. The cruiser actually came in to try to save the sub and did sink a few of uh, the enemy's cruisers. But I don't think that sub's going to survive. Don't forget we got that message. We can also mine these ports, damaging the enemy even more. British absolutely have superiority in, uh, in you know, ability, numbers, etc. here um, near the English Channel. So I think um, a lot of our MPPs are going to have to go into uh, potentially getting new ships, as well as trying to bring allies into our into our army, of course. The submarine actually dove from the bomber attack, but he got our cruisers. All right, they're trying to cross the river there. We have plenty of, uh, is it Nambu machine guns? I think the Nambu is the pistol. We're ready for these uh, attacks. We can hold them back. We are the ones on the offensive as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much, Bostiva. In my control of the politics, yes and no. So basically, that's what that whole um, MPP thing is for diplomacy. Technically, I could bring countries um, that either were neutral in the war or supporting the allies onto our side, as long as we're willing to spend as much MPP as possible. We're basically we're using that to um, you know get infiltrated in their political system, 
uh, you know, give them reasons to fight the Allies instead of fight us. And eventually you can get many countries to turn uh, for us, which is pretty cool. What I've always wanted to try is get Ireland to join us. Because the Irish, uh, as much love as I have for the Irish as a people uh, and their struggle for independence, they did, because they hated England so much at the time, they did provide a lot of uh, clandestine support to the Germans. Uh, that, that has just been proven, which is a little, a little unfortunate. Thanks again for that, boss. Well, that always helps, guys. The cheers. Uh, also, the likes. Uh, subscribing is great. Following, even. Following is amazing. Uh, just helps us get higher and higher in those search rankings. At the end of 1940, you will be presented with a proposal to deploy a force in Italy to serve in the Mediterranean. The force, which will be known as Africa Corps, will consist of ground forces and air units capable of fighting the British in this theater and forming. It will cost 500 MPPs. If you would rather not invest in this, as the war progresses, you may wish to consider deploying units in the Mediterranean so that Italy doesn't have to fight alone. A lot of different um, ideas here. Intelligence reports uh, that Stalin may attack Manchuria should our military presence there appear weak. Um, I thought we already kept all the units in this area, but let's just make sure there's no cities unguarded, and this might be one of them, so put our HQ here. really want to get rid of those partisans. They are such a pain right now. We're even using naval assets to try to kill these guys. Heroes need some practice. Uh, we'll bring the um, the fourteen, the twenty-four. Oh, my Roman numerals were shit. Uh, the seventeenth. We'll bring the seventeenth in, and I really want to divert them over here. But if we get a good attack, oh yeah, I'm going for it. There are so many different generals back here. One of them could be Chiang Kai-shek. You know, it's a chance to uh, severely lower enemy um, positioning as best as possible. No, we don't want to op operationally move the unit. Okay, guys, let's see if we can take Warsaw. I think that's going to be very important here and also allow us to divert some units to France. rainy day so our ship our, our ships our planes are not going to be very useful either way it's going to be a tough fight damn all right we have to attack on all sides and they still may fight us back they are fighting tooth and nail to hold the city here we go why not we'll take lublin over here There we go. What about those new paratroopers, guys? The guys just out of the academy. They've done such a good job so far. And beautiful. We're removing the SS Panzer KDT guys here. And we can keep up the attack. Why not? Mudlin is still under uh, enemy control. Pretty much a northern suburb of um, Warsaw here. It's very similar to um, places like Stubel in uh, Lisbon, where Stubel is technically considered its own city, but it's so close to Lisbon, they, they might as well be the exact same city. That's kind of what's going on here. So it's still important to take this area before we can establish total victory. Ooh, some of these Poles are still putting up a good fight. All right, time to bring in the medium bombers. I didn't want to have to do this. Oh, no, once again, it's raining. Not an option. Oh, I think we're stopping the Germans, excuse me, the Soviets before they've gotten just about anything, which is great. Let's go after that Polish airfield.
And again, we might as well bring as many planes as possible. I think I'm going to take these guys right here, and these will be the ones to reinforce uh, that area. But first, we've got to break down these Polish lines. Poznan is ours. And I would guess that that enemy unit is going to be under our control very, very soon. crazy thing is we are right outside of Minsk. I mean, that's another thing about, you know, rejecting the molotov ribbentrop Pact is we would be able to do so much damage here by taking Minsk almost immediately. Smolensk would be right there. Moscow is so close, so much closer than it would be otherwise. I don't know, guys. Maybe we'll do something crazy here. Let's see if it makes a, a lick of difference. time for some of our men to start moving back we don't want to send everybody back don't get me wrong i mean we absolutely still want to have a defensive line here uh, near the soviets but we've got to send some guys to that french line or else i don't think we can win and that includes bombers it includes hqs it includes a lot of different things It also includes the Italians getting, getting their act together and joining us here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna be a bit sneaky here. I'm actually gonna go uh, via the north. Hopefully this works. Uh, to get to the enemy merchant lines. Oh, enemy contact, of course. Uh, let's attack that battleship. It's a risky fight, but I know we can do some damage. And again, we can still buy more units. In fact, I'll take a look at the purchase screen for the Germans very soon here. Yeah, we have to repair that sub very soon. Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's wait a little bit on that. Okay, I'm going to go to Diplomacy. It's so important that, you know, um, these these guys that are kind of on the fence with us join us. So I think... No. I think we can get them up quite a lot. And I wonder if we can do the same with the Japanese. No, we can't. That's too bad. Okay. All right, guys, we don't don't have enough to buy any armies, etc. Let's end the turn. Yep. Wish us luck. Poland surrenders. That's what we wanted to see. Beautiful. 
and Germany plunders 236. That's going to allow us to build so many new things. Our offensive against Poland has been a great success, and the Polish army has been decisively defeated. Um, Molotov, the Soviet foreign minister, is now urging us to pull back to our previously agreed but partition lines and honor the non-aggression pact with the Soviets. Um, okay, if so we say yes to honoring the pact, we will gain imports from the USSR worth 25 MPPs a turn. That's pretty good because that also helps build up our army. If we say no, we will lose these imports and the USSR will swing 20%, 30% towards the Allies. What do you guys think, man? I'm going to give just one minute in case um, anybody wants to, you know, throw their feedback in here and see which one we should do. Um, you know, more than one vote would always be best, but we'll work with whatever we've got here. How about that? Oh, my Lord. Being the leader of Deutschland is not easy. So Bostov is saying no, Napoleon is saying no, you guys are crazy. All right, okay, fair enough. We're gonna do it, guys. So this is this Let's Play is from here on, uh, when I upload it on YouTube, it's gonna be known as like the alternative uh, history Let's Play. So we are not going to say okay to the Soviets. Hopefully they don't attack us right away, but Poland has completely been taken by us. It's an interesting situation. Stalin is furious at German betrayal of the non-aggression non pact. Yeah, this could cause problems in the future. Irish Prime Minister de Valera protests the occupation of Irish ports. We could get the Irish on our side as well, although I don't think they can make much of a difference, except maybe uh, messing with some of the uh, English uh, ports, things like that. British occupation of Irish ports causes some anger in the USA. Very different from what actually happened in World War II already so far, guys. Look how beautiful Manchuria looks under our, our glorious emperor's control. All right, George Elsewhere attempts to kill Hitler in the Munich Beer Hall push commemoration. And the Fuhrer's okay, but that's always a problem. And look at that. We've already got a major snowstorm uh, over here in the Northeast. But so far, we aren't openly at war with the Soviets, but we want to boost up um, that border to make sure they don't start any wars with us, of course. like the uh, Chinese generals are staying there so maybe they're not as weak as I thought they would be but obviously knocking out some Chinese generals will mess with enemy logistics a lot and probably help us with this invasion As you can see here, I could be wrong, um, it looks like we're not in open conflict with the British yet with the Italians. That's the reason that we can't move into France yet as well. Um, despite the fact that everybody's declared war on Germany, they have not declared war on Italy yet, despite being in the same uh, faction. So we'll see when that happens. I don't recall when it does, uh, but we want to be prepared. These British are getting awfully close. Of Chinese units, man. A lot of Chinese units. We need to boost that production up on our Japanese side. Another thing we can do is actually use MPP to bring the Soviets back to the table. 
um, you know, not necessarily for the Molotov or Ribbentrop pack, but make them less furious at us. I think that might be a good idea to buy us some time. Um, generally, the best time to attack the Soviet Union is 1941, before 1942, if we're, if, if we're of course, um, you know, lucky enough. Ger Germany celebrates victory over Poland and the return of Danzig. Uh, French morale suffers from the fall of Poland. Very good. And it might be time to start our attack of France once we get enough units over there uh, to make that happen. How do you guys think it's going so far? Honest opinions. You think we're doing a good job here as Germany? Um, what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to save the stream. Um, I'm going to stop it now. I'm also going to be uploading all of these parts to YouTube. And, of course, please uh, be interactive with this there as well. If you want me to name a unit after you, we can make that work. Uh, let me know what you think we should do. Feel free to uh, you know, give some feedback, and we'll move from there. The U.S. Secretary of State has communicated to us in the following statement through the American charge the affairs in Berlin. The U.S. government has adopted a declaration of general neutrality and established a naval Pan-American security zone. This zone averages 300 miles in width and runs south from the city of Halifax through the Caribbean and west of the Panama Canal. It is required that all warring nations refrain from any belligerent activity within this, within this zone. Okay. So basically, if we don't want to piss the Americans off before Pearl Harbor, um, then maybe we, we just want to play it cool and not move too many ships into that area. Intelligence reports Stalin may attack Mitchell. Yeah, we know this. We know this. All right, we've got that garrison. Can't we drop it over there? We have to drop it. Yeah, we have to drop it on the mainland of Japan first before we... Uh, Get it on an amphibious craft and head home. Maybe Seoul is another area we we should have those units in. And again, the poor weather is making it impossible for us to get any air support. All right, guys, thank you again. Again, we'll decide what we do with with these armies after a, a, a huge victory over Poland, but potentially starting conflicts with the Soviets far too early. Um, we could even attack uh, places like Lithuania, Latvia, etc., um, and maybe get them on our side early on. But right now, I just want to keep trying to get the Bulgarians on our side. They haven't joined us yet, but it really, really looks um, like they want to over here in Sofia. And who knows? That could help us big time. Thanks again, guys. Take care, and I'll watch you in episode two. Let's see how far we get.